Hello and welcome to Gadget God USA. Thanks for watching my biotech hidden Wi-Fi nanny camera product review. Uh, essentially what it is, it is a spy cam that looks like a smoke detector made to mount on your ceiling and things like that, as is the norm for spy cams and cameras in general. Uh, I like to start them off with an uh, actual footage shot with the camera, uh, so you can get a good idea of the video resolution, the sound quality, and uh, you know what you're going to get if you actually purchase this device. Uh, this is the only, uh, you know, Wi-Fi UF or Wi-Fi smoke detector um, spy cam that I've found under $100, and uh, so far I'm really impressed with it. I'm having fun playing with it. Let's go ahead and get started with the product review. Thanks for watching. Okay, now we're done with the actual live demo. We're going to go ahead and go uh, over what you found in the actual box. Uh, so if you hear some feedback, sorry, that's the laptop I have next to me. I have a, the PC thing set up. I probably should have turned the volume down, but hey. Everybody makes mistakes. Uh, the first thing you'll find in the box, of course, is this uh, UFO smoke detector. Um, I mean, it does look like a smoke detector. It doesn't look like a traditional United States one, but if this was uh, put on the ceiling or something like that, uh, you definitely wouldn't be able to, uh, you know, you wouldn't look at it and be like, hey, well, what's that thing up on the ceiling? That's not a smoke detector. Um, so it does have a thing. If you notice, this is the actual camera right there. It's about the size of a pinhole. Uh, it has a little button. I think that's to make it look more like a uh, actual uh, smoke or smoke alarm and I do believe that that's a reset uh, if you actually cross these two metal I doubt you can see the metal things down in there uh, and I've already taken the screws out uh, here and here but they actually come with it and the reason I have the screws out I'll show you in a second to get to the SD card uh, but this is how you charge it uh, right here and you can also transfer data so uh, in order to actually put the SD card in there you can add also has an on and off switch uh, to save battery or whatever else uh, once you take the two screws out, you have to remove the two screws. Be very, very careful uh, because you can actually break these two wires. If you just jerk it off, uh, you're going to break one of these two solder points. Uh, but you do have to take the two screws out in order to install an SD card. And the SD card uh, just slides in right here. Uh, I will warn you, it's kind of tricky. Uh, I did have the SD card in there to actually record the video you saw and all that. So uh, I did have one in there. It works fine. Uh, I just didn't want to have to put it back in. It takes quite a bit of work. Uh, the easiest way I would say would actually be a pair of tweezers to lower it down in there. I, I could get it in, I got it in there just fine. Uh, but if you notice, I have big fat snossage fingers, so it makes it kind of difficult to get down there and put my little uh, card in there. Uh, so pre pretty much once you uh, put the SD card in there, you can uh, close it up here. And uh, like I said, just be careful. You do not want to break those wires because if you break those wires, uh, you just disconnected your battery. Uh, so we don't want to do that. Uh, so once you put the SD card in there, I would consider whatever SDI card in there, I would consider it a permanent attachment. I would put it in there, I would uh, put the screws back in, and uh, never open it again, just because I'm too worried about uh, actually uh, breaking that. So we don't ever want to break the things we buy. This wasn't an expensive device, especially compared to other spy cams, uh, but of course we don't want to uh, break anything that we don't have to. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and get done with that. Uh, the construction is all plastic, uh, so not really a whole lot to talk about there. Uh, it comes with a charge cable. You can charge it with your PC, uh, or you can just plug it into this included tra travel adapter and charge it that way. Uh, so this is the actual mount. Once you get those screws on, you use these two screws, and then you pull it, put it up in there, and then this actually spins and locks on. Uh, so you can install it, you know, more like a traditional smoke alarm. Uh, like, Includes everything you need, just a standard uh, plastic bracket. I mean, nothing crazy there. Uh, here's the box. I believe I already showed it to you. It really doesn't give you too much information. It just shows you supports iPhone, Android phone, yada, yada, yada. Uh, and you can get the app uh, from the Apple Store or the Android Store. Uh, and they both work fine. I actually have it running over here, and we're going to go over that. Uh, so we'll go ahead and get rid of the box here. Uh, this was the driver CD. This includes... Uh, both the P2P Cam Live app for Android phones, it does not include the Apple Store app, uh, and it includes the uh, program for your PC uh, to actually connect to the camera and control recording and listen to sound, and uh, we're going to go more over that here in just a second. I do have a PC running the actual app there, uh, and we'll get more into that. The next thing we're going to talk about is uh, the two instruction manuals. Uh, it included this one. Uh, which is in both Chinese and English. I will admit this one's kind of hard to understand. It's a lot more in-depth than this one. Uh, so if there's something you want to do that's not covered in this manual, I would go back over this manual. 
uh, but I would say whoever wrote this, their native language was definitely not English, uh, so some of the verbiage gets kind of difficult to go over. Uh, but if you do step through it and you have some patience, you can make it through using this uh, instruction manual. Uh, however, you're just not going to have a very great time. Uh, fortunately, uh, in the very top of the device, it included this one, uh, which is just a single page. Uh, it doesn't go over every single feature in the world, but it goes over all the features that you're going to want to play with. Uh, like I said, if you want any advanced features, you're going to have to go through the Broken English uh, large manual. Uh, but it just basically goes over everything. Uh, so where, where does it start? Section 1, how to connect to Wi-Fi. Uh, this actually, to connect with your phone, this actually broadcasts a Wi-Fi signal. So the first time you connect, you're going to take your phone or your PC and you're actually going to connect uh, to a wireless connection. It's like STK, STK3350. You're going to connect to it and you can set it up. And then later on, you can actually, uh, you can connect. Then you use the settings to connect this to your own Wi-Fi. Uh, and then you can actually uh, view it on the go. Uh, as of right now, the way I have it set up, uh, here's that phone app actually running here. Here, I'll spin it so you can actually see my face, I guess, so you can get a good idea. Okay, and I'm going to probably be upside down here, but sorry, there's nothing I can really do. Uh, as you can see, now I'm upside down. Uh, right now I have it connected. The phone is connected directly to the camera. That's because I do not have great Wi-Fi in my studio. Uh, but I already have tested out. What I did is I hooked this to my Wi-Fi, and then I connected this uh, to my laptop uh, using 4G internet and uh, I got everything to work fine. So okay, it tells you section two, how to enable, how to, how to connect to the camera. Uh, if you grab your PC, you can actually just go to this IP address and you can log in uh, through your browser, you know, Chrome. I, actually, I didn't use Chrome, I used Firefox and it worked fine. Uh, and then the step three is how to install the micro SD card, I already went over that. Uh, step four is how to use the camera uh, to connect to a PC. It's very simple, follow the device. Uh, it basically use the program that's connected on here and it'll connect right away. And then section five is connecting the camera through the internet, uh, which the easiest way to do that is the P2P Cam Live app. Sorry about that noise, apparently they're picking up the trash, so it's going to be kind of loud. Uh, so that was all pretty easy. Uh, like I said, it's much easier to follow these instructions than it is to follow these. Uh, even though I went over that, um, not too bad, uh, but I would go ahead and stick with these single page devices. Uh, now we're going to go ahead and talk about the P2P Cam Live app. As you can see, it's kind of recording here. It's not doing very well in the super bright lights in my studio, uh, but it is functioning. Uh, so basically all you do is you connect to the, the SSD, uh, and like I said, it'll be, you connect to Wi-Fi and it'll be SDK 3350, uh, and then you click, click here to add camera, and then you click scan. And the neatest part about this is it opens up a barcode scanner, flip it over, and you basically just scan that barcode. I don't want to do it again because I already have it set up, uh, but you can see how that works. It just scans and everything puts up in here, and then you have to put in the password. Uh, the password is included on both instruction manuals, so it's not hard to do. After you click add, it'll appear here. It'll say camera, and it'll give you a serial number, uh, and you have some options. You can reconnect. You can edit the camera. You can uh, take snapshots. You can take the camera off. But basically, you just click on this camera, and now you can view. Uh, and as you can see, you can see my ugly mug here. Uh, so, and anytime you want to take a picture, you just click that and it'll save snapshots. Uh, and you can save as many as you want. If you want to view those snapshots, you click there. Uh, so the P2P Cam Live app is actually, uh, it's really easy to use. It's really straightforward, especially if you've ever used an IP Cam app. This is actually one of the easier ones I use. Uh, okay, and what we have here is uh, the actual app. Um, it, it came right off of the disk. And we're just going to step through it here. Um, it was a, a folder named Wi-Fi Client Side Software. I double clicked on that. Uh, double click on the PC side and then there's a folder. There's only one. So it's 13062301RR. I have no clue where that name came from. <laughs> Horribly overlong. Uh, so then we, we're going to open the 5350 client. Uh, and that's exactly what we're looking for to connect to the U or to the connect to the smoke detector. Uh, just make sure you're connected to the you have your Wi-Fi connected to the smoke detector too. It'll be listed as an STK33 number. Um, and basically, if you didn't have it set up, you just click search, and when you click search, uh, it'll pop right up. You click there, you click OK, uh, and the, the password is admin. Uh, if you need the TUTK password, it's going to be six eights. Uh, just so you know, all that's listed in the manual and all that good stuff. Uh, then you just click on the cam here, and you click play, and we will be able to see what's going on there. Oh, there and there's my ugly mug again. Uh, so you can kind of see all the stuff I have uh, equipped here, ready for uh, 
uh, filming. Of course, it's upside down because the UFO is sitting uh, flat, flat side down. Uh, but you can always just, if it was mounted on the ceiling, it would be right side up. Uh, so, and then we're going to go over some of the options here. So we're going to right click on cam. You can go to properties and that's going to change the password. And if you want to change the camera name or do anything like that, uh, you know, that's the availability there. Uh, you can also right click and you go to advanced settings and you can also get to the advanced settings uh, through the browser setting. I believe I mentioned that earlier uh, where you can actually log in through a browser. It's just like a 10.10.10.254 address. Uh, so if you click advanced settings, it just takes you there and there's a lot more settings here. Uh, if you're going through a complicated um, sorry about all that racket. I have no clue what that is. My neighbors must be driving a shopping cart downstairs or something horrible. <laughs> sorry about that, but uh, okay. Uh, my studio is kind of uh, in a densely populated area. So, okay, you have all these options, and if you're going to want to do stuff outside the norm, uh, you're going to want to set up all kinds of crazy things for whatever personal reasons you like, uh, then that's where you're going to need to go is advanced settings. You can either go through the client and click on advanced settings, or you can log into 10.10.10.254, uh, you know, through Firefox or Internet Explorer or whatever browser you choose to use. Um, we have remote file. I didn't mess with that, so I'm not going to talk about it like I'm a pro. Uh, but remote control is what I used a lot of. And that's where you're going to set all your shutter options. You can start recording. Uh, if you click start recording, it will start recording directly to the SD card that you uh, installed uh, in step one or two or the early in an earlier step. Uh, you can change your password here. Uh, actually, if you notice right here, it's telling you no SD card. I've removed the SD card from there uh, at some point. So... It no longer has an SD card in it. You can set the record time and motion. So if you'd like motion to, uh, if you'd like to, anytime it detects motion, uh, to start recording immediately, you can click that button and it'll start that and you can choose the time. So right now if I click motion, it will motion record for 30 seconds every time it, declare, it detects motion. Uh, so pretty self-explanatory. You can set the date and time. Uh, frequency 50, 60 hertz. To be honest, I have no clue what that's going to change. Uh, in America, it's 60 hertz. In some other South American countries and in Europe, it's 50 hertz. Uh, so take that what it is. Uh, originally, uh, the test video that you saw me talk at the very beginning of this product review, that was shot in the 1280 by 720. Uh, but if space is an issue or you're worried about your card running out of um, you know memory, uh, then you know, click 640 by 480. It's not a great picture, but it does work. Uh, and then QVGA is even lower than VGA. Uh, I didn't try out that option, but I'm just going to assume it works. It just it's, if you if you have a small SD card, you're going to want to set it to QVGA so you can get a good idea of what's going on uh, without filling up your video card or fi filling up your SD card. Uh, but this was a really neat thing uh, to find a smoke detector. I'm going to go ahead and move this uh, to find a smoke detector or a spy cam that looks like a smoke detector, just so you know, it does not operate as a smoke detector. Do not use this as a safety device. And please respect all local laws when using spy cams. Um, so I couldn't, I mean, I found a $300 spy cam, which I really can't even afford to play with. Uh, but this one at under $100, um, well under $100 I might add, uh, it was amazing. It's uh, You can connect with your phone, you can connect with your Android, you can connect with your Apple, you can connect with your PC device, uh, you can connect on the go, you can connect on a local internet. Uh, it comes with, you know, it has free apps attached to it. It comes with a free PC app. Uh, the directions, I admit the long form directions were, you know, not that great, but it did include that single piece of paper that's going to step you through the entire process in a simple, easy to understand manner. Uh, so we definitely like that. I have to give it uh, two thumbs up, not only because it's a really awesome camera, a really awesome spy cam, uh, but also because it's extremely, it's an extreme value choice at under $100. I mean, uh, so definitely two thumbs up. I really enjoyed playing with this and I think you will too. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed my product review today. Comments are always welcome at the bottom of the page. Subscriptions are always appreciated. Thank you. And if you have any specific questions, comments, or suggestions, please email me at gadgetguideusa at gmail.com. Thank you for your time.